So thanks for checking out the video. Uh, just to let you know, I do these videos not as philosophical statements of any sort. Uh, these are just intuitions that come to me at different times, and, and I feel, you know, compelled to, to, to put them on video. And I try not to actually think too much about it because if you've seen my other videos, you know that I think the thinking mind is a great tool, but it's not a great way to live your life. Um, and so I'm perusing Amazon and I just, you know, came across the Velveteen Rabbit. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with this or you probably wouldn't have clicked it. Um, and there was something that caught my attention. I thought, wow, it's going to be kind of deep. And it was the subtitle was how toys become real. And I thought maybe this book has something really interesting to say about consciousness. And it turns out it absolutely had some very, in my opinion, some fascinating things to say about consciousness and magic. And, and what the thinking mind is uh, often considers magic or mysticism. It's just anything the thinking mind can't understand. So the, it starts off with the boy getting a, a toy, a Velveteen Rabbit for Christmas. And it starts off right at the beginning, very interesting, because the boy was distracted with these other mechanical toys. And um, I'll come back to that. It's kind of interesting about the mechanical, be and because um, the rabbit soon makes one of the most philosophical questions you could possibly pose, I think. And he asks, what is real? You know, what a bizarre thing to throw in a kid's book. Um, because, you know, I think maybe we ask that question when we're kids, and then we start to ask that when we get a little older. And the rabbit thinks initially that maybe to be real means you have to have something that buzzes inside of you. And I thought, wow, that's, that's so close to the way neuroscience sees things, you know? You have to have a buzz. You have to have a brain. You have to have something moving to be real. And of course, human beings have, you know, uh, you know, when we, when we go out, we don't see things, you know, if you don't have a brain, if you don't have a nervous system, we don't consider them to be alive. And, um, and even their reality seems to be a little bit in question. But, um, so what is real? And two really important things come out of this. So to be real is to be loved. And then once you're real, you're real forever. Uh, you know, uh, some very interesting philosophy from a kid's book. So the rabbit is loved by the boy. And the interesting thing about this is the more he is loved, the more his physical deteriorates. And um, that's just the nature of this material. Whatever this existence is, um, it does change and it deteriorates. Bodies get old, things get old, and toys get old. And it seemed like that was you know, correlating with him becoming more real. And um, finally, you know, so the uh, rabbit gets lost for a while, and finally the boy finds it and says, and then very emotionally just says, you know, how much, you know, um, you know, this isn't a toy, this is real. He makes that kind of declaration. And that sort of uh, is was what we might think of as like a Satori experience. And so sometimes when you're wandering around in this reality, you get this experience that this is more dream, like a dream. And there's a deeper reality, and, but it's a real quick glimpse. And then you go back. And so he's uh, with these two, quote, real rabbits. And then he f figures out something's wrong. So even though the boy said he was real and, al and alive, it just didn't seem to stick. And then we see the second part of the transformation. It's a real common archetypal theme. Like you get a glimpse first, and then the real transformative experience follows. And so the boy gets sick, really sick. And... Um, the doctor says all of his toys have to be burned. And that's when we get to the real intense transformation, that kind of burning up of the old, the burning up of the material, the burning up of illusion. And not to get too serious, but this is kind of the, you know, the burning up of our images of what we think death is. And so death is probably tops the list for most people's fears. And it's a strange one because we fear it but we don't even know what it is. And so when you really start burning up the illusion, what you realize is we're not really afraid of death. We couldn't be because we don't know what it is. What we're afraid of is our thoughts of what we think death is. And then it gets very interesting because again, if this is a dream world and there's a deeper reality beyond it, then there absolutely would be nothing to fear from death. So to get back to the story, uh, it takes, for the second transformation, it takes a lot of magic to happen. 
and I'll get to that in a second, but the magic really transforms him and it burns up all the physical. And so, um, you know, he's absolutely real. And um, that sort of hints that, at, you know, the illusion of the physical, when all the physical gets burned up, then we're, then we're getting met with what's actually real. And you, it's a real common theme in near-death experiences. When uh, people kind of transcend this existence, and then they come back and they say, this world, you know, even though we consider it material and things, it just seems a lot smaller and a lot less significant than what they had experienced with that kind of transcending experience. So now he's real, and he's you know, moving and dancing with the other rabbits. And then another very interesting thing happens, because he sees the boy again, and he's actually a real rabbit, and the boy recognizes him. And that kind of makes one speculate. Um, in particular, you know, if you've read Zen and Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, at the very end, he tells a story about his son who had died. And then he had uh, an experience that reminded him of his pattern and almost like the boy's presence. And this is a real common experience we have where people who have moved on from this world, and maybe the way the book puts it, maybe they're moving on to something far more real, but they seem to leave us hints, you know, they seem to kind of interact with this world, even if it is a dream, they interact with it at times. So, um, it's becoming far more common in the consciousness world to think that consciousness is real. So when we ask the question, well, what is real? It's becoming far more common to say, well, the material world is just an idea in consciousness. So we know the two are connected. But I was on a podcast, The Consciousness Perspective, a couple weeks ago. And I'll post that if I get a link, because it was a really great interview with Gary. And we were talking about the nature of consciousness. And we both talked about how common it is for people to talk about the underlying consciousness as being love. And it sounds kind of trendy and maybe like hippie-like or something. But uh, people who have this experience almost uniformly talk about it as being, you know, unconditional, you know, unbounded love as being the source of being. And in a way, that fits with the story. You know, it's love that brings one into being. And it's that consciousness that brings us even into this dream world. And it's that consciousness, that that love that we'll return to. And when we return to it, it lasts forever. And so common for people to say, well, God works in mysterious ways. And that just reflects that the thinking mind can't comprehend love. And the thinking mind can't comprehend the kind of bigger plans and design and the complexities of consciousness, which in this case is just love. And that's something that we just will never be able to understand. The thinking mind just isn't able to do it. And that puts us in a really strange position, because if we identify with the thinking mind, we'll never really know what is real. But so we can't just rely on thinking. We have to be willing to take that leap of faith and use intuitions and feel that the ground of our being is is love and the ground of our being is the that that's the only thing that's real